Brendan, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm training. Training for what? For the stair contest. You said that we were gonna be doing a stair contest today, so I was, you know, training, climbing the stairs. Brendan, I said we were gonna be doing a staring contest. Staring, like with your eyes. Yeah, that makes more sense. I'm Lawson. And I'm Brandon. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. Hey, can I ask you a question, Lawson? You just did. Uh, can I ask you another question, Lawson? You just did. Stop that. You just, just Stop did. Stop it. Just did. Just did. Ask your question. Okay. When you think of having grit and toughness, what do you think of? Beef jerky. Okay, I'll give you that, okay. Anything else come to mind? Ooh, my Aunt Lulu. She was a tree logger, toughest person I've ever met. A tree fell on her once, and she just caught it. All right. Nothing else? Sandpaper. Cowboys. Oh yeah, cowboys. That's what I meant to say right after, like my Aunt Lulu, and then there's beef jerky, and then I was gonna say cowboys, and, and then a little bit after that, there's sandpaper. Great. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Well, hello, partner. What, oh, I'm just trying to speak the lingo. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah. Please tell us who you are and what you know. Well, my name is Duke Canyon, and I'm a professional cowboy. A real cowboy? Wow, I've never met one before. Why don't you just uh, tell us all the things you have to do, please? Well, you gotta get up at sunrise before the cattle call, and the hours are long, but it's, uh, it's a thankless job. Someone's gotta do it. We may be in the background, but we are important. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's, it's true, what would we do without you? You guys help create some of my most favorite things. Burgers, steaks, beef jerky. <laughs> uh, well, how many other cowboys do you usually work with? Well, it uh, depends on what we're doing. If we're in a cattle ride, uh, could be uh, 30 or 40 of us. If we're in a fight, it might be three or four of us. Or maybe 30. A, a fight? Yeah. Well, heck, we could be um, pushed off a cliff, pushed over a wagon, dragged through a river, or even dragged behind a horse. It's all part of the job. What? Yeah. Last year, I was over and over, uh, over 50 fights. Yeah. I've had bottles broke over my head. I've had uh, chairs broke over my back. I've been drugged behind a stampede of horses. It's, uh, it's all part of the job. Why would anyone want to do a job like that? Well, you don't quit the job because it gets hard. You gotta keep going, you keep trying. It's all about pushing through, ain't it? Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I think it's about time for me to ride on out of here. Oh, well, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. I, uh, you headed back to your cattle now? No, as a matter of fact, the next one's gonna be a, uh, a train robbery. A train robbery? Yeah. But it doesn't start filming now for another uh, two weeks, so uh, I'm going to the Bahamas. The, Baham <laughs> the Bahamas? Yeah. Filming? Yeah, I didn't tell you. Yeah. I'm an extra and a stuntman in uh, Westerns for film and television. Yeah. I didn't mention that. No. An extra? Yeah. So you mean all, all the fighting, all the bottle breaking, the cliff throwing, and, and the train robbing was only in the background of a television show? <laughs> only? Now hold on a mo. I have you both know that I've had me skull crocked, I've had me ribs broken, and I've had me teeth knocked out. And let me tell you, it was more than a few quid to get those punched back in too. Oh, sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what a quid is, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's probably the most dangerous job I know, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Well, uh, adios partners. Adios, yeah, adios. Adi adi adios. adios. And, uh, thanks again. Yeah. Bye, partner. What just happened? 
I don't know if I'm disappointed or if I should chase after him for an autograph. Same. Yeah. It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! Hey, hey guys, um, listen, unfortunately something has come up and I can't be with you all today, but don't worry, everything's fine. And I don't wanna leave you all high and dry. So I asked my good friend Cameron and he's gonna take over for me today. All right, take it away, Cameron. Hey guys, you know, I think I've seen that cowboy in a show or two. Really? I'd say. That dude's got grit, no matter what his job is. No doubt. You got a Bible story for us? I do. It's about someone who I think has even more grit than a cowboy. Oh, and I'm gonna need your help for this story. No, no problem. problem. It's time for Human Head Puppet Theater. Our story starts with Moses. Let my people go. No, no, we haven't gotten there yet. Oh. You shall not pass! We're not there yet, either. Actually, we're not telling that part. Just hang on. All right, fine. Moses' people, the Israelites, were enslaved by the Egyptian king, Pharaoh. Moses had grown up in the Egyptian palace after being rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. Our story today starts when Moses was around 80 years old. He had long since left Egypt and was living way out in the middle of nowhere. One day, while Moses was out tending his flock of sheep, he came upon something unbelievable. Look! A bush! But this was no ordinary bush, because it was on fire and it wasn't burning up. It's on fire and it isn't burning up! All of a sudden, a voice called to Moses from the fire. Moses, Moses, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have seen my people suffer in Egypt, so I have come down to save them and bring them to a good land. Okay, God, that seems like a swell idea. See ya. I am sending you to Pharaoh Whoa. to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Whoa. Me? But what if no one believes that you sent me? Throw your staff on the ground. Right? God turned Moses' staff into a snake. Wah! And then back into a staff. Well, that was weird. It was cool, but it was weird. I, I'm still a little nervous about going back to Egypt. You see, Moses didn't feel like he was the greatest public speaker or the right person for the job and wished God would send someone else. But God knew Moses had it in him, so God promised to help Moses communicate with Pharaoh. Moses' brother, Aaron, would help. God would speak to Moses. Moses would tell Aaron what God said, and Aaron would relay God's message. Before long, Aaron and Moses went to Pharaoh. The Lord said, let my people go. The Lord? Who is this you speak of, and why should I care what he says? And why is it so hot in the desert? <gasps> oh, you know what? I am not going to let your people go. Instead, I'm going to make the Israelites have to work even harder. <laughs> Man, I'm a good pharaoh. Well, as you can imagine, the Israelites were pretty mad that Moses made things worse for them. And I think it would be safe to say that Moses was pretty upset too and probably wanted to quit. But with God's help, Moses kept going. He went back to the Pharaoh by the Nile River. The Lord sent me to tell you to let my people go. But you didn't. So this is how you'll know that God ain't playing. I will strike this water with my staff and the river will turn to blood. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. Even David Copperstream could do that. The Israelites are going nowhere. <laughs> 
Pharaoh was stubborn, but Moses kept going. He went to Pharaoh again and again, and Pharaoh continued to deny the Israelites' freedom. God is gonna send frogs. Frogs? No deal. I love frog legs. They taste like chicken. Now God's gonna send gnats and flies. Ah. Come on, you can do better than that. What do you think bug spray's for? Now all the cows are gonna die. You're gonna get terrible sores. There will be hailstorms. And locusts will eat all your crops. Okay, this is getting kind of serious now. Still no. Since Pharaoh couldn't be persuaded, a darkness fell across Egypt for three days. And then the last and worst plague of all, the oldest son of every Egyptian family died. Finally, Pharaoh could not deny the power of God. Get out. After hundreds of years, God's people were finally free. But that's not the end of the story. We'll get to that next time. Great story, Cameron. Yeah, thanks for your help. Anytime. Hey, you were right, Moses had a lot of grit. He did. He kept going when things got tough, and God was with them the whole time, helping Moses know what to do and say. Well, I guess like Moses, when we go through hard times, and we will, we just have to remember that God can help lead us through. So we shouldn't give up. Exactly. Sounds like you got it. I guess I'm out of here. Gonna go watch some more westerns. Adios. Did you know Cameron spoke Spanish? I did. Reveal the question. When have you been through a hard time? Wow, uh, this could be a lot of things. You could be having a hard time at school with someone picking on you, or maybe someone close to you has died. Yeah, or maybe you're having to deal with the consequences of a choice you made that may not have been very wise. Whatever it is, you're not alone. God knows what you're going through and doesn't want you to give up. That's right. Man, we've been through a lot today, Lawson. That's true. Anytime you can cover cowboys, a burning bush, and a singing Moses, you've done pretty well. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. That was The So-and-So Show, everybody. Goodbye. Good. Bye. This is my cowboy hat. This is my cowboy accent. <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> Part partner. That's your cowboy accent. No, howdy, partner. No, howdy, partner. Ha clink, clink. What is that? Right. Clink, those are my spurs oh, there. Okay, Tell okay. you what. cowboys wear spurs. All right. This like, town ain't big enough not. for the both of us, no, partner. Draw, draw. All right, oh, good go. horns. Here, wrap this around. Okay. Uh, here. Uh, all right, uh, all right, all right. Try to get away. Uh, now, got it. Hold her tight. Pull him no. in, pull him down, no. knock him out. No. Yeah, that's right, no. we got him. Now you take a Brandon iron. My oh, okay. No!